right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Wayne Washington, who is in Evansville, Indiana. How are you doing, Wayne? I am doing great. Fantastic. And Wayne is known as the doctor of operations and uh, he... Uh, helps CEOs sustain growth profits by eliminating hidden costs, disengaged employees, and unnecessary complexity. So you're singing our song, Wayne. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is either you align your company's strategy, culture, and operations, or you're leaving money on the table. So let's dive straight into it, Wayne. Uh, in many companies, company strategy is kind of done at the C executive level, Operations is left to the head of operations and culture is something that just organically happens over time. But rarely do you hear the three of them talked about together. That's, Why is that's that? That is the key. And I guess my, my years of experience in operations has, has taught me that. And why I say that, in most organizations, operations is a stepchild. You know, strategy mm -hmm. comes first and we got to make that strategy happen. Oh, and then we got to keep our people happy. Oh, oh, by the way, we have operations. Oh, well, what can we throw, what can we give them a bone? We don't usually don't give them a bone at all. You make your strategy, you get your operation, I mean, your, your culture on board and you let the operations fend for themselves. And that's usually what happens in most companies. That is the issue why you're leaving money on the table. And why I say that, John, is because they all share the same resources. You know, you have the same manpower, you have the same money, you have the same materials, and you have the same management. And how do you divide that up where you're using your resources effectively? We have the right resource at the right time, at the right place for the right reason. So if you're not utilizing your resources effectively, there's the issue. And how do you get to use, utilize your resources effectively? You align your strategy, culture, and operations. And, and I, I think the best way to try to talk about this, John, is to give your audience a picture in, in their mind, okay? Picture a Venn diagram, which is basically three circles that intersect. You have one circle, you, you have the word strategy. The other circle, you have the word culture. And the third circle, you have the word operations. Now, if you're not operating in the center, in the sweet spot there, you're, ha you're, you're misaligned. It's basically what I call it, it's misaligned. And when you misalign either heavy in culture or you're heavy in strategy or you're heavy in operations. And based on where you're heavy at, that kind of dictates your operating style, your style of management. If you're heavy in strategy, you're a top-down company. You do as I say, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll let you know how to think. If you're heavy in culture, you're into, let's all get along. We like each other. Let's, make, let's keep everybody happy, okay? And then if you're heavy in operations, it's, by the book, cut that cost. Let's let's hit those tight operations. All three of them are different operating ways you could run your business model. And if you favor one versus the other, you're out of sync. And when you're out of sync, there are three what I call value drains. Where when I say value drains, they're draining value from your bottom line. I call mm -hmm. stealing money from your profits. Yeah. But in effect, you have one. You have disengaged employees because if they don't feel involved, they tune out. Number two, you mm -hmm. have unnecessary complexity. I mean, there's, there's all these rules and, and check with this, check with me before you can act or you have hidden costs. You, you, you started your business many, many years ago. Your operations has changed, but you haven't adapted to it. So you have costs of it that are left in there, but have not been managed or, or out. So if you're not in alignment, John, those, those three things occur. And that's just a short answer to why yeah. I think it's important. No, I, I did great. Uh, so let's talk about the first one here uh, about disengaged employees, because um, because as you said, I mean, sometimes when you when people think, OK, we have a, a, a disengaged employees problem, then they start to default towards the culture side and everybody runs over there and suddenly it's all about, you know, culture and getting people engaged and all of that. But the point you're making here is disengaged employees, uh, you have to look at it holistically and not sort of go, oh, let's put a Band-Aid on this by suddenly doing a lot of culture work. That's exactly right. You know, and I think when I look at what happens in most businesses today, 
they focus on one or the other. They're bringing a consultant, a, a, a culture expert, or they're bringing a strategy expert. Rarely do they bring an operations expert. They don't usually care about operations. That mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're actually sure they don't care about operations, but that way. So when you bring in those experts, you only focus on one piece of the pie. And the word you use is the word I try to use a lot, holistic. You, you got to use a holistic approach. Why? Because you're sharing resources to all three segments of your, all three pillars of your business. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I, no, that makes total sense. Uh, and and I, th I think that sometimes that they don't real. I mean, the thing is that people belong in most companies, they have departments or titles and everything. But in a modern company today, as you know, there is so much overlap and shared resources and all of that, that, it, that you have to set it up in such a way as you can leverage your, you can use your, your resources like chess pieces. Right. And, and you, well, you can use your resource like chess pieces, but the other problem I find, John, is that people don't have a good handle of the resources. You know, if you focus only on your bottom line, if you focus on profit and loss, and, and, and that, that's your gauge as to how well you're doing, what to me, what that's saying is you're, you're looking on lagging information. It's almost like yeah. driving your company looking through the rearview mirror. All right. Mm -hmm. Resources are the things you use every day. If you get a handle and contract, and if your resources are transparent and your resources are accountable, you have a leading indicator. You could know today how well you work on your strategy for tomorrow. You could know if you're going to make your numbers this month on the second of the month versus the wait to the next month to find and find a PL. So it's it's change. It's, I'm not saying get rid of lagging indicators. I'm not saying stop looking at PL. I'm saying augment it with real-time live information. So you have your p and that, that's your scorecard for you, your, your business dollars, but how you're running your business, your resources have to be front and center, transparent and accountable. Yeah, no, that, that makes total sense to me, Wayne, and I agree with you. Uh, we have a tendency to focus on lagging indicators and not focus enough on leading indicators because a lot of people don't understand what leading indicators are. They don't know how to identify them and, and, and how to monitor them. And I think if you have that, if you have more of a leading indicator or a balanced uh, approach, look, looking at lag, obviously lagging indicators matter. But leading indicators are when you can make an impact because you can't impact a lagging indicator by default no, because it's, it's the it's past. History. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the other thing that you mentioned here, I love is the complexity thing is because here it, 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 there's something really interesting about human beings is that we love to overcomplicate things. We say we love simplicity, but we actually act completely differently. Um, I mean, you've been in you've been in plenty of these kind of scenarios. I'm sure yes. it's it's where you talk about an issue or something that you want to do and you start to plan it out. And suddenly everybody's coming in with every exception in the world. And suddenly you're building this crazy process that deals with exceptions that may or may never happen right and right. suddenly you have a very convoluted way of approaching things and and, and when when that happens john you, you you've lost sight of the big picture now usually when you put a lot of those com i'll use your words convolutions in mm -hmm. someone's trying to cya you know they're trying to make yep. sure they don't make a mistake they're not wrong they're putting a check or balance here or there so hey my my, my payroll's on the line my bonus is on the line let me make sure that's going to work right so let me put this check in here so i'm taken care of it's not so much mm -hmm. about the big picture it's more about i versus we and that's where it usually comes down to you know one of the big things i talk about when i when i work with people and truthfully i've set a standard where I will not work with any company that does not adopt collaboration and inclusion as the norm. If you're not willing to collaborate mm -hmm. and include your employees, we have no time together because you're not, you mean you're not gonna be successful in aligning your strategy, culture, and operations. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more because at the end of the day, these are the people who are going to be executing it. And uh, and as we all know, that if you if you just push things upon people, they will, you know, they, they don't tend to react that well to it or they'll find holes in it or gaps in it. But it is it is really interesting that, that you're correct about but people putting in extra steps and checks and balances and stuff that. Don't make sense. Uh, I did. Uh, I did a course many years ago at the um, up in at the university up in Michigan, uh, mm -hmm. and it was a lean office, right? So a lean office. And one of the things that I always took away from that is um, the the instructor said, you know, part of the lean process is when you look at all when you lay out all your processes, and then if you were to say to a customer, you know, some of your money is going towards this part of the process. 
would you pay for it? And they normally say, no, you can give me a discount for that because that's got nothing to do with me. So I think having that kind of approach where you're thinking, why are we introducing complexity for the sake of complexity? Yeah, it, it, well, it's, I think it's done subconsciously, John. I, you know, I, yeah. I don't think people put complexity in to make to bring the pot process down or to leave money on the table. I think they're, they're in their heart, their intentions are good. But the results are not what they use. The results are counterproductive to what you're really trying to do is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. No, sense? no, absolutely. No, that makes total sense because, I mean, sometimes you have to say to people, okay, it's let's, let's lay out this process as the best case scenario. So a simple, straightforward process, and then we can deal with the kind of exceptions that come up, but don't let's start building from exceptions forward. Well, you know, and if, I, if I may, I've talked about the alignment of strategy, culture, and operations. Yeah. You know, to your, your audience listening, okay, Wayne, that's talk. How do I do that? How do I make that happen? You know, it's, 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 it, as you say, it makes sense, but how do you implement that? And, you know, we, we have a process we, we basically called our, our profitable growth aligned buy-in strategy. And, and what that basically, basically says is it's got, you got to have a holistic approach, All right. So when you, when you're looking at your, at your, your, your strategy, your strategy is saying where we want to go, how do we want to win? Who are we going to who, who are we going to play against? Who, I mean, who are we going to who's going to be our audience? And once you have that, that's got to be crystal clear and communicated to your, your employees. It, it can't be this this book that's held in the CEO's office or the C level that they only have the details and everybody else has got to guess and fend for themselves. But if the strategy is clear and everybody knows what their strategy is, and then you as you work through the organization, everybody knows how their day to day activity fits into the strategy. And because most people, most people work, most employees work, they're doing their job and they have no clue how it fits in. Okay, I'll do this. Oh, I have a whim to do this today. Oh, let me try this. And they try that whim, it's counterproductive to the strategy, but they don't know it. They think they're being innovative. They think they're doing something great, but because they don't know the strategy, they don't know how it fits in, it's, it's counterproductive. All right, so you got to have this strategy crystal clear and communicate it throughout the entire organization. On the culture side, you know, people implement your strategy. People run your company. And if you do things where you're ignoring your people, what I'm saying, your employees, again, it's counterproductive to your strategy. And I'm, I'm going to give you an example. And I, I learned this a long time ago, and I had to learn it the hard way. This is back in 1994. I was working for Mead Johnson Nutritional, which is, they make the Infamil baby formula. And 90, if, excuse me, it was 94. Yeah, 94. When you look at that time frame, outsourcing was the major thing that most companies try to do. Keep your core stuff, outsource everything else. All right, so I was an, I was responsible for the facility group. We had we were the ones who took care of all the infrastructure, you know, the toilets, the, the grass, you know, any, anything that had to do with infrastructure for the company. I had a, a staff of about fifty four people, eighteen million dollar budget, and basically had a five million dollar capital budget. All right, so we knew that that was a prime example for someone to outsource. And I was blessed, I'll say blessed, with a work crew, my work, my average worker was between 45 and 60 years old. These guys were thinking about retirement. They were not thinking about changing to, to, to make, to, to, stay, to, to not save their jobs. So I had to, I mean, I had to, how do I get them on board? In effect, we had to make the strategy, the outsource of the enemy. He was a guy we all were fighting against. Of course, we're all trying to save our. I'm not trying to save my job. You're trying to save your job. You don't yeah. get to retirement unless we unless we fight off this outsourcing. To make a long story short, we came to. Uh, I, I got a group of people who are my leaders in the in the my leaders of the employees, really the most vocal ones, the ones who have the the influence in the department. I pulled five or six of them together. We created a team, and they came up with how do we put together what I'll call our work agreements. How are we going to work with each other? How are we going to behave with each other? How are we going to respect each other? And all 54 people in the department signed that. And, once we, and it, was, it was displayed on the board. Once that was together, once we knew we had to respect each other, we knew we had to work with each other, okay, now let's go charge and get that enemy. How do we get the enemy? We get the enemy by being better, faster, and cheaper than the outsourcer. Yeah. That was our slogan. And that slogan was up there for the entire time. Again, make a long story short, in 1994, between 1994 and 1996, we reduced our operating costs 
27% over those three years, over that mm. three-year period. And that was reduced, and I had an $18 million budget. That was reduced by my employees, those 45, 55-year-old, Wayne, let's do this. Wayne, let's look at this. We could bring our cost down by doing X, Y, Z. They were involved, they were engaged because they were saving their jobs. So when I talk about the culture, you got to have some kind of compelling story that your employees are the stars of that story because they're the ones got to make it happen. They got to see themselves winning. Does that make sense? Oh, it, it makes 100% sense to me, Wayne. Uh, I tell you, I did something when I ran a company, a couple of companies some years back is, um, and, and this fits in exactly what you're saying is, we produced every year a one page strategy document, which had all the goals and the strategy for it. I actually, back in the day, had it laminated so that every single employee had one, regardless mm-hmm. of whether they're in the office or remote. And I said to them, uh, at any stage during the year when you're doing some work and you you look at the strategy thing on the wall in front of you and you can't relate your current work to that, then I want you to raise that with your manager and to ask yes. them and say, can you can you show me where this is contributing to the strategy? Right on point, Jonathan. We're saying the same thing. You took a different yeah. approach, but you did the same thing. You got the people to challenge what they're doing and make sure what they're doing is in alignment with the strategy that that was set. So we all buy in. Yeah, yeah. And one other thing I did is um, because, uh, you know, everybody, you know, the salespeople get their commission and everything and they want to get their sales. I got the, all the operations people. I said, OK, if we exceed our, 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 operating, um, our operating profit goal, then you get bonused on it. So suddenly the operations people started holding the salespeople accountable for the margins. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and I, I appreciate that, 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 that that tidbit of information because it, it fits right in what we're talking about. But I only talked about two of the three circles. Yeah. I talked about strategy and I talked about culture. Let me come back now yeah. and talk about operations and, and, and what's mm-hmm. key in operations. Because that, that's the one that's key, okay? When, when you think about operations, you got to think about three different processes that you're working on. One is project management. And projects are those one-time things that you start. You have a start date, end date. You have a goal you're trying to get into and you try to implement that, 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 that project. Number two, you have work management. You have all the work that comes in, whether it be part, project, part of products are part of your work management, but you also have payroll, bringing new people on mm-hmm. board, performance reviews, all kinds of things that go that go on in, on a daily basis that you have to build for the resources you have in work management. The third thing is asset management. You know, assets are your people, your places, your processes, your purchases. I mean, if you buy a new air conditioner, and don't do any work on it, no, no preventive maintenance on it, you're not going to get the life out of that, of that air conditioner that, that you would have if you prevent a maintenance. Same thing applies to your assets. You just can't have an asset, whether it be people or places, put them in place and never go back and develop them, never go back, never back and help them. Okay, so you have to have a way to manage your assets, your projects, and your work all at the same time, and how you distribute your resources to make sure you have the right resource at the right place at the right time for the right reason. And that right Mm -hmm. reason comes back to tie it into your strategy. All right, the thing that we feel that you have to do, you have to put all those three processes, your projects, your processes, your projects, your work, and your assets all in the same backlog. They're drawn from that same backlog. And what we have put together over the years is what we call a three-week rolling schedule. And when you put a three rolling schedule, you have to determine what your what your priorities are. So if a project is that to a key client is the most important thing to you, that might be your top priority. But you still have to do payroll, you still have to do onboarding, you still, you still have to do your preventive maintenance. Okay, you, that becomes a priority and your asset management becomes a priority. So when I say a three week rolling schedule, you're identifying over a three week period, almost like a, a meal planning schedule. What yeah. resources do I need? What manpower do I need? What materials do I need? What money do I need? What skills do I need? And you're looking at everything you're trying to do over the next three weeks, and you you have it on a schedule. Why say three weeks? Two weeks out, you're forecasting what you need. All right. So when, yeah. if you know two weeks out, I need the, this resources, I need this 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 material. What you have then is you know, are there any conflicts? It gives you two weeks to work out conflicts. Oh, Bill's gonna be on vacation in two weeks. I gotta change that. All right. Then the second week is your planning week. You know, I right, I'm down to the nitty gritty. This is gonna be on my operating schedule next week. Is everything I need here? I say that I used to work in, in maintenance. I had well, me, Johnson, I had responsibility for maintenance. Mm-hmm. How many times you would send a maintenance crew to the production line and yet the part you're looking for wasn't available? Wasted yeah. time, wasted money. All right, so do the same thing from your scheduling standpoint. Bef- the week before you know what you're going to run next week, make sure everything is there. 
And then it comes down to your operating schedule. When you have your operating schedule, which is what you're going to be running next week, and you can put the schedule together Thursday before the week happens. When you have that next, you know you have everything there. My goal to any company I work with is there's only one measure that matters. How much of that operating schedule did we complete? Right. If we complete 80 to 90% of our operating schedule completion week after week after week, we'll be profitable, we'll be successful, and we will grow. But what happens is they, you, let, you let people distract you. You get that schedule there, and somebody calls and say, let's do this. So you, you pull resources off your schedule, and you're going to do X, Y, Z. You do it now. It's, it's somebody's emergency. It's my emergency because you lack the planning. Does that make sense? Yeah. And yeah. So putting that together from a strategy standpoint, the operation standpoint, from the culture standpoint, you look at all of them as distinct pieces, but you use them succinctly and let them work together. That's how you bring together, you align things. And when you're aligned, and I, this, I, this has happened, I mean, I see this year after year after year as I work with people, when you're aligned, you do not have disengaged employees. You do not have unnecessary complexity. You do not have hidden costs. All those three things are stealing money from your bottom line. So I say you're leaving money on your table. If you're not, your strategy, operation, and culture are not aligned, you're leaving money on the table, period. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more with you, Wayne, and it's fantastic. And I love the, the three-week thing, because especially nowadays, that it's so hard to predict you know, too much further out than having shorter time horizons yes. are more efficient and manageable. Yes, it, 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 it is that, you know, uh, I see a, a lot of our companies, our companies are the companies we choose to try to work with. We try to work with project driven companies, people that have major mm -hmm. products, like I'm saying like marketing agencies, professional services firms, or B2B SaaS things. They deal with a lot of projects and those projects are dynamic. You know, it changes from day to day, week to week. So you can't look a month out. You can't plan for a whole yeah. year in a project environment. You have to have a shorter window. And I, that's why I think that three week window lets you plan ahead, lets you make sure you have what you need. And when the rubber meets the road, drill that operating week, you've done your homework, you prepared, you have what you need to have to do what you need to do. Yeah, fantastic. Listen, thanks so much, Wayne, for joining us today. All of Wayne's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and your company. Okay. The name of the company is Grow Company Profits. And I'm found at growcompanyprofits.com. Uh, my email address is wayne at growcompanyprofits.com. And just, just a, a last closing thought, as I say, John, there's a, a, a assessment tool we put together and it helps companies look at how well your strategy, culture, and operations are aligned. If you want to send your, your, your audience to www.alignmentanalyzer.com, alignmentanalyzer.com, it, it, it could put you through, it, it, it lets you see where you stand. It can see whether you're strategy heavy, culture heavy or operation heavy. So, I mean, it's a tool. It's something that you're, you're, you're it at least gets you start thinking. Once you see how much money you leave, once you see how you're out of alignment, our next step, we can show you how much money you leave on the table. Once you see how much money you leave on the table, you're going to say, either I'm going to do something about it or live with it. And most people try to do something about it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, so we'll include uh, we'll include that link absolutely uh, to the assessment. Uh, thanks again, Wayne. So much great information in there. So thank you very much for that. Thank you for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again for another interview really soon. Thank you.